I'll be honest with you, I was a late adopter to the technique and um, I really wished I hadn't been. So if you're watching this, learn from me in the first place. As soon as you can, get a drop shot rigged up and start using it. Because what you'll find out is it's very effective because of one specific thing depth control. Drop shot, because of its nature, with the weight on the bottom and the bait above it, I can set that bait anywhere I want. It's basically the polar opposite of fishing with a bobber where I can go the other way around from the surface. We've said for years, depth control trumps everything. Got a good one too. All right, we'll see what we got this time. And guys, I just keep working that drop shot in circles. It's the only thing I can get bit on, and I recognize it's a lack of imagination, but um, it's the only thing I'm getting bit on, and I'm only catching I'm, I'm only catching average fish, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm catching some small fish, like real small fish, and then some average fish for the lake, which is what I have right here. I'm guessing this is probably a oh, 13, 14 incher, if I'm guessing. And for this lake, that's what you're looking for. At the end of the day, the old maxin flatworm right there is still putting him in the boat. And we'll see how close I was. I said I figured he was 13, maybe 14, just based on the feel. And that is a 15 inch fish. So I was a little bit, little bit uh, off on that. But there you go. That's one horse tooth smallmouth. And we're going to give him a kiss because we need that. Right here, buddy. We'll put you back right there and let you take off straight back to the bottom. So the drop shot talk about the drop shot real quick um, because I know a lot of people are very familiar with the drop shot but not everybody so I've got let me get it straightened out if you see I've got a fusion 19 number two drop shot hook hanging right here and then there's a sinker back here that's a quarter of an ounce a drop shot sinker back there it's a quarter of an ounce there's a palomar knot tied right here at the hook and then the tag end from the Palomar knot is what goes down and, hit and deals with the sinker for you. And I can set that sinker anywhere along this line I want. So then up here, where is it right here, where this finger is up on the line is a leader knot right there. And so I've got a leader that's maybe four feet long. And like I said, I've got the very light uh, X9 braid and the Trident 100% fluorocarbon six pound leader. It's my super finesse rod and it's the only thing that's catching me fish today so we'll see if we can catch another one with it but basically long story short i'm throwing it out on the structure i'm letting it go to the bottom it's on the bottom quick as you can see the line went slack and then i'm doing very little with it just a light little rod shake or nothing at all just letting the water do it and then you can pick up on it every now and then i can feel it's moving around and I got another one just like that. So this is the size I've been catching tons of, guys. So those don't always make TV shows, right? But they clued me in because I every time I put a drop shot on, I get bit on these. I get bit every time with, with one of these little guys. But anything else I put down doesn't get bit at all. So I can use those guys as my gauge. There's no weight directly attached to your to your uh, offering, so to speak. So the weight, which which may feel unnatural to the fish, uh, is on the very bottom. And so your little maxent flatworm or the, or the flat nose minnow or the gold minnow, all the things we've talked about, uh, all of those are very, very effective on the drop shot because the bait has maximum liveliness and no feel to it. So when fish bite that thing, uh, it feels right to them. And because we're pretty much, for me exclusively, gulp or maxent, uh, it's either power bait maxent or gulp that I throw on every drop shot rig. The fish even get close to it, they're gonna bite it. And that's a really important thing as well. Uh, <laughs> new spot, guys. And we're just doing day one stuff. We're just cruising around, looking at the various maps. And I have the mapping wizard with me, Dan Swanson. And again, we're having to stay a little bit closer to the bank than we'd like to. I don't think this one's a monster, but he's a nice one, and I'll be happy to have him. It's a walleye. It's a walleye. Look at that! Hey, I came I'm to. I'm not gonna lip him. No, I don't. Hey, whoa! Hey, he's in the boat now, ain't he? Okay. <laughs> well, we got him. Uh, I'm not gonna lip him. But... There you go. <laughs> There's a walleye. Now we're sitting on this offshore hump, and that's not much of a walleye, but we are on Lake Malax, so that's my. Is that one of my first Minnesota walleyes? I'm trying to think. I believe that's true. I don't I, think you've caught one. I yet. believe that's my first Minnesota walleye right there, guys. 
walleyes on heavily pleasured places like Mille Lacs or Glendo, the drop shot's really effective because I can put it right in front of their nose and leave it there, not even move it at all. And the bait's so subtle, it'll just barely move in the water column, and that's all it takes to get walleyes to bite in a lot of cases. Got him. All right. There we go, and that's why you go back to your waypoint that you just marked, guys. So we, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, in the last hour and a half, we have struggled, another walleye. <clears throat> We have struggled to get our smallmouth bite to continue, and we weren't able to really run around this morning. We only have a, today to fish, and so we came back to a little bit deeper spot. I put that drop shot down again on some fish that we marked earlier today, and they were still here, and Dan's gonna grab that walleye right there, and if we were, ah, hey, he does, he throws them in the boat like he, like he owns. Yeah, keep them out of my rods there. Hey, easy fish. All right, there we go. <laughs> walleye, nice thick Mille Lacs walleye. Obviously they get a lot bigger than that, but we will take it and uh, on the drop shot rig. And that is one Minnesota walleye. When it comes to species, um, for me, drop shots caught a whole bunch of stuff. And I mean a whole bunch of stuff from, from rock bass and, and green sunfish all the way to walleyes, crappies, trout, both in open water and through the ice. There's a rainbow trout, and he is going to eat my drop shot, and I got him right there. <laughs> There's your rainbow trout, guys, and we're going to put him back quick because those guys don't do well in the, in the boat. As well as, of course, the smallmouth and largemouth bass that it was designed to catch. Just let me guess, your drop shot's still working, huh? Yeah, I think drop shot works. All right, well, I'll get him later. Oh, that's a nice one right there. There you go. Yeah, I'm going to bring him over to here. I'll get a hold of the line. Hold his head above the water, and Dano. Nice. That's why you go drop shotting right there. And he got that little Fusion 19 right in the tip. Yeah, that's that's like the other. I know, right? And the funny thing about it, guys, is it looks like we're right on the bank, but the boat's actually sitting at 50 feet of water. That's a vertical drop right there. Yeah. And dude, that's a quality fish for this lake. That's this a lake. really quality fish. I mean, this ain't Malax. <laughs> Can I put him back for you? you uh, that's a good looking one, guys. And then the drop shot strikes again. Let's see what you've got. You've got the green pumpkin maxent flatworm. Yep, yep. I've, I've been using the, the smelt color, also use the brown back and the cinnamon purple flake, and they're all getting bit. So, yeah, I love this color. Oh, yeah, who doesn't, right? It's the most popular <laughs> color in bass fishing. Yeah.